This is Troy Taylor with the Championship Football Coaches Clinic podcast, sponsored by Rack Coach and Sports Workbook. I have Coach Keith Kenyon on today from the Big New England Football Clinic, and this is probably the most historic and largest clinic in America. So, Keith, for the people that don't know, um, can you introduce yourself to the clinic and tell us a little bit about where you're from before we start talking about the clinic? Sure. Yeah. Thanks for having me on, Troy. I really appreciate it. Uh, so I'm originally from upstate New York, uh, right around the Albany area, and I'm the son of a high school football coach. My dad was a coach for over 40 something years. And uh, ironically that, you know, my dad was, uh, you know, my my mentor and my role model and everything else. My dad, can you believe it? Being a head coach for over 40 years, never had a losing season. Woo! Was, yeah, pretty successful guy and um, really did a lot of great things for the game of football in terms of providing clinics and seminars and that kind of thing. And that's really how I got involved in the clinic world. But played high school football there for my father, along with my three brothers in high school, and then uh, went to Springfield College of Massachusetts. At the time, was a Division II school. And uh, great school, played for four years there. The home of coaches, um, right? The home of coaches, that's right. Yep. Yeah. And so, you know, the, the tie into that is that my father played at Springfield, and I also had the opportunity to play with my brother, Kevin, who was a wide receiver with me there at Springfield. But when my dad played there, he played with Coach Dick McPherson, who you probably remember was a head coach at Syracuse and uh, New England Patriots, that kind of thing. So when I left Springfield and graduated, I went to Syracuse as a graduate assistant under Coach Dick McPherson for two years there and worked with some phenomenal coaches that I, I won't name drop, but I worked with some great people. You, including you can name my, drop because Coach Coach McNally told me I was a name dropper. <laughs> I, well, I've, I've known him a one, week. Troy, the, the most prominent one that I worked with was Jim Tressel, who he became That's a, coach a good one. Team. And uh, I worked on the offensive side of the ball with Jim and uh, have been friends with him for over 40 years since we worked together. And uh, so, yeah, so I did uh, two years at Syracuse. I did two years at the Coast Guard Academy, which is in New London, Connecticut. And then I became a head high school coach at the ripe old age of 24. Mm -hmm. uh, I was an athletic director and a head football coach and did it for 25 years in Rhode Island at a school that, uh, you know, really wasn't known for its football and had a three year losing streak and um, was able to turn it around and have some great success there. And then when my kids were older and gone on to college and moved out of the house, my wife and I moved to Cape Cod in Massachusetts, and I became an athletic director and a head football coach there. Once again, inherited a program that was on some tough times and turned it around and did some good things for five years. And then I entered the uh, then I entered the dark side and became a principal. I became an assistant principal and a, and I've ended up in career. Yeah, what are you going to do? So, uh, for, but it was for fun. a year. Yep. So it's. Uh, that's kind of my career. I've, I've been involved in football since the time I was born with my dad. And, uh, you know, even though I don't coach anymore, um, I'm, I'm lucky enough to be involved in the game through this clinic. And, and when I gave up the, my head football coaching job on Cape Cod to Troy, it was fun because Mike Sherman, if you remember, who was the head yeah. coach at Texas A&M really with the Packers, Mike took my place. He became the head coach at my high school. He had a summer home, uh, on Cape Cod, he retired there after the Dolphins, and I coached special teams with Mike for two years together. So we've known each other for a long time. As well, well, I'm gonna want, I'm gonna want to get Mike on. Because, oh yeah, I mean, he's a foot. I'm, I'm a football junkie. I, 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 and since you're from New York, I mean, Customato, Mike Tyson. Like I, I'm like Mike Tyson. I'm in love with with football players and football coaches, and I'm I'm just in love with football, and I study it, and just like Mike Tyson studied from Customato and learned from him. So to meet you and to know that, you know, you've been around a long time, it just makes me happy. The one thing I hang my hat on as a coach is that I was able to get Jim McNally onto Twitter. <laughs> now so he's all over it, Troy. He's everywhere. <laughs> well, I, I, I am the coach. I am the man that made that happen. And, Good for you. Uh, oh, I mean, I met I met him. I texted him. I said, Coach, we come on the podcast. I had his number from some clinic he had done. You know, he always gives out his number. And he answers back, okay. So I call him. I get him on this. And he's like, uh, what, is this Zoom? And I was like, no, Coach, this is StreamYard. He goes, what is, what is this for? And I said, podcast. He goes, 
can I have a podcast? And I was like, coach, yeah, you should have had a podcast. And he goes, how, how are people going to know that I'm going to be on your podcast? I was like, well, do you have Twitter? He goes, yes, I got two of them. And I was like, what's your name? He goes, I don't know. Jim McNally, five, seven, three, four, seven, five. I said, okay, coach, we're going to switch that. Two <laughs> pictures and a name change, one hour on wow. FaceTime. So I, I, I hang my hat on that. And we, we have, I mean, we've had a lot of fun. I've only known him a week. And I know he's spoken at your clinic. He so has. He's a great clinician. The great goat. Clinic. I mean, he told me, he said, Troy, I'm not the goat because I won Super Bowls or a lot of games. I'm the goat because I was nice to people. And it's true. And I gave back. And I told him, I said, you're still giving back. He's on the greatest platform of all time to give out information. So, coach, I mean, I, I'm I'm just happy to have him as a friend. But uh, he's a good man. Jim McNally is a quality, quality person. Yeah. So he, he's from up there in Buffalo. I'm from Richmond, Virginia. And me and my buddy, we were just talking. And he thought, Coach, that New England was the place that the Patriots played. I, I was like, dude, like, we don't know geometry. That's what I said. It's geography, Coach, but it's six states. And Rhode Island is a part of that in the clinic, Coach. Tell me the history of the clinic. So this will be our 49th year. And uh, Chad O'Neill started this clinic in the basement of a parochial school in Rhode Island 49 years ago. And Chet was a former coach at Colgate, Harvard. He had coached at the college level and he lived in Rhode Island and I coached in Rhode Island. That's how I met Chet when I came to that area in 1985. And I was involved. I've been involved in this clinic since 1985 with Chet when I came to Rhode Island, but Chet and my dad were very good friends. And my, my father was, uh, you know, Chet used to recruit the area where my father coached. So he and I became real quick friends and, and I took over the clinic from Chet in 2012. And, uh, you know, it was, um, Chet was very, very good at the clinic game. He was outstanding. And at that time too, Troy, there wasn't a whole bunch of clinics in competition with what Chet was doing. And uh, he had tremendous numbers. He would have, you know, 1,000, 1,200 coaches who would come to Newport every year. And, um, but that was, yeah, and, but that, you know, it was before too, that the, the Nike no coach the clinics, exactly. That's right. No internet. Yeah. And now you have a lot of competition in your field, you know? So, um, but when I took it over from chat in 2012, we had to, you know, for the lack of a better term, we had to modernize it. We had to create a website and do online registration and do those kind of things that, you know, Chet was an old school guy. He was a paper guy, you know, and everything yeah. was done through the U S mail and that's how we did business. So, you know, we're pretty proud of it. Um, what we do, Troy, just for the format of the clinic is we go over two days and we start this Friday. We start at the first lectures at one thirty, and it goes until, you know, nine, nine thirty at night on Friday. And then it starts back up at seven thirty in the morning and goes to about you know, four o'clock the next day. But we have six lecture rooms going on at the same time. So we're at the Newport Marriott and we have a virtually an offensive room where college coaches speak about offense. We have a defensive room. We have kind of a combination room and we have two, two rooms that are designated just for youth coaches. So we have quite a few youth coaches that attend our, our clinic and we have two that are dedicated to them that high school coaches like yourself will do lectures to speak to the youth coaches. And then we have something that's really unique that a lot of cl clinics don't have Troy is we have a big area in what we call the atrium at the Newport Marriott Hotel, and we do live demonstrations there. That's so awesome. what happens is we have, you know, for instance, Don Brown, who's the head coach at UMass. Don is going to do a lecture on defensive back play, and we get players from Salve, Re Salve Regina University here in Newport that come over and, and give their time, and he coaches those kids. So he'll have the defensive backs from Salve Regina and he'll do live demonstrations of drills, techniques, fundamentals, that kind of thing. So not many places have an opportunity to provide that live kind of visual learning. I think we all love the classroom and it's a great thing, but I think the visual learning and you see cell phones out, people just taping that thing left and right because they're going to take it back to their school. So six lectures going on at the same time nonstop from 1 30 on friday to about four o'clock on saturday in between there we have some um, unique features we have keynote speakers uh, our keynote speaker this year is bob chesney who's the head coach at holy cross and bob has had unbelievable success at all levels 
Um, he's originally a guy that started his head coaching career at Salve Regina in Newport, went to Assumption College Division II in Massachusetts. Now he's at Holy Cross, and he was the FCS Coach of the Year in Division One this year. And uh, he'll he'll be there, and we'll have – one big session with him with everybody at the clinic will watch Bob speak. And then we have a question and answer period afterwards, Troy, and the coaches that are attending pre-submit their questions to Bob. So we have it so we can recognize who asked the question and, and Bob will do a Q and a session. And the other part that's unique about that keynote thing, Troy, is that we do a youth coach of distinction award for every new England state Amen. at our clinic. So we honor one guy from each New England state that's been nominated by maybe a high school coach, maybe a Pop Warner coach, whatever. So we have six coaches coming from New England. They're going to be honored as their state award winners. And Bob Chesney actually presents the awards to them as the keynote speaker. And then Friday night, we have a beer blast. We have a raffle. We have a huge beer blast that lasts from, you know, 9 to 11 and – uh our guys have a lot of fun in the city of Newport. It's a great, it's a great little city by the sea, and these guys have a good time. So, um, and then uh, the next morning, we get up, and Dante Scarnecchia is our keynote Ooh. speaker at seven thirty. And if anybody knows Dante Scarnecchia, he, in my opinion, might be the greatest assistant coach in the history of the NFL. He's got six Super Bowls. Yeah, he's not bad. He's not bad. And he speaks at this is probably his fifth time that he spoke at our clinic, but we give him the entire clinic again. Dante's an early riser. He gets up at four o'clock every morning being a former Marine. I so, we give it to him. Yeah. so we give it to him at 730 and we fill the room and Dante does a phenomenal job speaking to coaches. And so, yeah, it's kind of a unique two day format. Um, we have a lot of coaches from all over the Northeast and beyond that speak. And, you know, we have Troy, we, we're kind of lucky. We have 13 head coaches from the Northeast uh, going to be speaking at our clinic and one from Delaware, Ryan Cardi from the University of Delaware, who had tremendous success in his first year this year. And we also have seven offense or defensive coordinators are speaking too. So it's a, it's a high powered lineup of some really good coaches. Hey, Keith, I, I'm so impressed with you. And if you don't mind, I was going to pull up y'all's website and just go through, um, you know, the website and go through all the speakers. I mean, I, I would kept going through and kept going through. And I was like, man, I remember when y'all used to send out the flyers, um, <laughs> you know, and, and I was always like, uh, I was like, wow. Like name, while I pull this up, name some of the names that have spoke at this clinic over the last 50 years. Now you can't name them all, but give me like 10 guys that you would be, that people listening would be like, okay, yeah. That's big well, there's so many of them. Um, you know, Mike Sherman is one we mentioned earlier yeah. that, that spoke at the clinic. Jim Dressel, who we mentioned earlier, has spoken there. Um, Kevin Gobride, he was the offensive coordinator yes. for the, the Giants. Dante, we had Josh McDaniels, the head coach of the oh. Raiders three years ago, who was phenomenal talking about the Patriots screen game. Um, Dick McPherson spoke there. Uh, there are so many. And, and this year, too, you know, you have Dante, obviously, I mentioned Bob, Bob Chesney, who's legendary. Donnie Brown, head coach at UMass, who's a great clinician. We're honoring Mike DeLong, who's the former head coach at Springfield. We do a Legends lecture, and we have one guy each year that we kind of honor that's retired and, and let that person speak so people can come in. And so Mike DeLong is there. Tim Murphy, who's a, you know, the winningest coach in Harvard history, is speaking this year. Uh, Tim and I were teammates at Springfield, actually. Um, Tony Reno, who's the head coach at Yale University, was the Ivy League champion this year. Uh, Jim Fleming, the head coach at URI, who has turned that program around completely. Uh, James Perry at Brown University is speaking. Eli Gardner at Stonehill. We got Chris Merritt from Bryant. Um, it's, uh, you know, if you ever looked on our website and saw the history of the 49 oh. years of who has spoken at our clinic, uh, you'd be blown away by it. that. A lot of them probably started at their in the youthful phase of their coaching careers, but then went on to to, to experience great success. So, yeah, we're, we've been lucky. Chet, Chet established a great clinic years ago, and we've just hoped to keep it going in his name. Hey, coach. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, I got, I got coach, I got coach McNally, coach. <laughs> hey, coach McNally, I got Keith Kenyon from the New England, the big New England coach. Yeah. Look at that, coach. They used to bring, they used to bring 
me in, but they fired me too. <laughs> Uh, Coach, you look great, man. I follow you on Twitter. You're staying in shape. And, and, and all those other old-timers, they said, fuck McNally. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, I told him that I was the one that got you onto Twitter. And he was – did you know, Keith, that I was the guy that got Coach onto Twitter when you decided to come on here? <laughs> That's <laughs> tremendous. I didn't know shit about Twitter. <laughs> So, Keith, you didn't know. You did not know that I was the guy. I did not. Man. <laughs> Coach McNally, would you like to say anything to the people that are going to be attending the New England, the big New England football coaches clinic? No, it was always a great clinic. It was a great, it a great spot. And uh, the, uh, they got great uh, hospitality rooms. They take care of the speakers. Uh, Chet O'Neill was a man, and I knew his dad, Coach Kenyon, because he made a bunch of birdhouses for me. And uh, I remember everything about the New England football clinic. I remember when it started in uh, high school in Pawtucket, uh, St. Rayfields, I believe. Uh, so, yes, I go way back with that clinic. Coach, you're the best. Keith, would you like to say anything to Coach? I'll call you back, Coach, after I get done talking to Keith. Hey, Jim, it's uh, it's great to see. I follow you and watch your workouts on Twitter. And uh, the guy's 70 and and keep plugging away. And uh, we, we'd we love to have you He's come 80. back and speak. Can you come? Yeah, 80? Oh, my God. Coach, Coach can you make it to Rhode Island by tomorrow? <laughs> no fucking way. <laughs> Can you make it next March, though, Mouse? That's the question. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, I don't know. Hey, Keith. We'll, we'll talk. I still move. I'm not sick. I don't have cancer. And I'm smarter than ever. So, uh. Keith, <laughs> tell him how you feel about him being on Twitter. I think it's awesome. It's great that he can share his knowledge with the world now because he is – probably the most innovative offensive line coach in the history of the game. He's just, he has taken techniques and fundamentals to a level that other people don't even know. Man. Coach, you're the best. The problem is basic clinic goers aren't really in the old line category. Now there's a lot of old line guys on uh, Twitter and things like that with all their blogs, but the kind of people want to hear the RPOs or the total defense or the total offensive thing. They're really not, I mean, I know plays, but it's more interesting to use to cover a number of short subjects on blocking techniques, pass or run in, in, in my wheelhouse. And there are not that many line coaches that really are smart enough or have an interest in that. I'll bet you when you go into the rooms now, the guy that's speaking about the RPO or uh, the entire defense or, uh, you know, uh, blitzes or, like I say, um, uh, you know, uh, plays, you know, the categories. The yeah. Needs, uh, no one gives a shit about the old line when they go to those clinics. And that's why you are you're, you are the founder of the Mushroom Society, right, Coach? Coach, there, there's a guy on Twitter called Coach Old School. All right, he's no, saying he invented the duo play. The what? <laughs> there's a guy on Twitter named Coach Old School, and he's saying that he actually was the inventor of the duo, the duo play and the cool clinic. He's full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> who, who is that's me talking. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, coach. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. You're the best. Yeah. I met him uh, two Saturdays ago, coach. So yep. I-, I hope everybody enjoyed that. Coach McNally uh, visiting in on uh, the big New England. But, I mean, coach, who else if was going to interrupt, you know, the uh, New England um, podcast here? 
I mean, would Jim McNally be the perfect person? What What would your dad and, you know, the original founder of the clinic, what would they think that he came on, on here? Is that not fitting? Oh, it's completely fitting. I, I could tell you some stories that really aren't. Go ahead. Tell me. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> no, but uh, Jim, uh, my dad used to tell stories about Jim all the time, especially when he was at Boston College. They spent a lot of time together. And Chet O'Neill, who founded the clinic, and Jim were very, very close friends. And, uh, yeah, he's uh, every time he spoke, he would fill the room in, in the big New England clinic. And people just love him. He's got so many people that – kind of read from the Bible of, of Jim McNally of everything that he does. And, you know, I've been watching because of your, your initiative here, I've been watching some of his videos on Twitter that I never got a chance to see before and, and to listen to him talk over the play. So, but I will tell you that, you know, Jim is talking about RPOs and that kind of thing. And that's the, the modern game, but Dante Skarnecki is speaking Saturday morning about, the ISO and the wham and, you know, things like that old school, eye football, Man. you know, blocking that still apply. And it all comes you know, Dante, back. It? Yeah. I, I think, you know, Dante says all the time, you can win with doing those things. And, you know, I, it was funny too, Troy. I remember when I asked Josh McDaniels, when he was there a few years ago, I said, Josh, in, in your heart of hearts, if you could run one offense, what would you do? And he said, I would be an eye pro and I'd run ice and toss sweep and off, off, tackle power and counter tray. That's what I love to do. That's football. So, Man. but you know, it's changed, you know, it's, it's completely changed. As my father yeah. used to say in his old school world, Troy, he used to say that football is now basketball on AstroTurf. So. Amen. <laughs> Amen. My greatest accomplishment before getting coach McNally on Twitter was getting Josh McDaniels, his dad, Tom McDaniels, yep. to actually get on the, the podcast. I had to record him. Really? Well, because I had to FaceTime them. So, yeah, I mean, it's been – I've only been doing this for a month. And, I mean, I've, I've gotten to meet some, I mean, amazing guys. I mean, like you said, they, they want to give back. And Coach yeah. McNally, I mean, he's been amazing. And, he, I mean, it's just – he's funny. Man, did you see the video he came out with last night, Coach? Yes. <laughs> okay, for anybody that hadn't seen it, all right, like, I found this the other day. But, man, somebody added music to it. I mean, is that great or what? He's the best. He is I mean, the best. He was a content creator. He's what YouTubers want to be 40 years ago. That's you right. Know? I mean, if he, if he would have had a YouTube 20 years ago, I mean, he would he'd be even have more money. So You're I'm right. on your website, Coach. Can you see it? I mean, Coach uh, Tom Caparelli, Cap. I don't know if you know Tom. I don't. Uh, but he he went to Springfield, and he was the one that told me that Springfield it coaches coaches. And this old school method of when I first started, I coached for an old school guy. He would make us or coach him. You know, can you talk a little bit about that? That's kind of a lost art of making the coaches go through the stuff like y'all do at Springfield. Well, we had to do everything, Troy, at Springfield. We had to learn how to coach every sport, you know, because a lot Ooh. of those those majors are our physical education majors are going to have to teach that at school. So you took everything from football. I mean, imagine, Troy, I graduated in 1981 and we had to take a football coaching course, but it was tackle football. So, you know, I'm a football player, so it wasn't a problem, but there were other students that were not football players playing tackle football during class. So, um, but you do, took everything from football to ballroom dancing to gymnastics and swimming and all kinds of stuff. So we all learned just about every sport. Um, and now you can see, too, there's a lot of coaches that are offering coaching courses, head football coaches at major universities now. I remember – Jim Tressel used to, to do one at Ohio State with Earl Bruce and John Cooper. The three of them shared a course that they taught together about football that 
you know, as we know, it's a complicated game and a lot of people don't completely understand it. And to hear it from that level of three legends in the game. Um, but yeah, Springfield was a great experience. I've met so many people and, you know, one of the guys that's speaking at our clinic, Troy, this weekend is Rich Manello, who's the head coach at Dallas High School in Pennsylvania. And Rich and I played together at Springfield. We were teammates and he became the first head coach at King's College in Pennsylvania when they started a football program years ago. And now Rich has transitioned into being a high school coach, but uh, he'll do he'll do a great job at our clinic. He's an outstanding coach. But yeah, so many so many contacts and people I've I've met through Springfield, and we'll probably have ten Springfield coaches at the clinic this weekend too. They come every year. Man, so I got y'all uh, line up. Uh, pulled up here. I know Ben Albert because he used to coach at the University of Richmond for Jim Reed, and I know you got Jim Reed, but if you just want to say something briefly about these guys, can you see the screen, Coach? Sure. Yep. Okay. So Stephen Barnett, first of all, the wide receiver coach at the University of New Hampshire, is a phenomenal young coach, and UNH got to the second round of the NCAA playoffs this year and uh, lost to Holy Cross for that matter and um, had a great year. So Steven's going to be great. He's going to do a live demonstration. Ben is is a great, great coach at UMass with, with Donnie Brown, and uh, he's going to do a live session as well on defensive line play. You can see John Holy there, who's the head coach at uh, Avon Old Farms in Connecticut. John's a former college coach that transitioned back into a private school, and he'll be a phenomenal clinician. Uh Trying to see everybody. James Perry, the head coach at Brown University. Um, Ross Jacola, who's the head high school coach at Barnstable High School on Cape Cod, who's a young and upcoming coach doing a phenomenal job. The last guy there is Savon Huggins, who's the running backs coach at uh, Boston College. And Savon is going to do a live demonstration on, on running back drills and techniques as well. We mentioned earlier that Bob Chesney, the head coach at Holy Cross, is our keynote speaker. And then we'll do the Q&A with Bob afterwards. And then after that, um, we get back into a, into speaking. So Bob's offensive coordinator, Bob Chesney's offensive coordinator, Chris Smith, is a phenomenal offensive coordinator at Holy Cross. He's going to speak. Then Corey Heatherman, you probably know Corey, I yeah. think, Troy. He was the defensive coordinator, James Madison, for a number of years before he went to Rutgers. Mm -hmm. And he's. I think this will be the fourth or fifth year that Corey has spoken. You know, it's one of the things about our clinic, too, Troy. Is Corey coaches Springfield, didn't he? No, I think he's a main guy originally, um, but he he was uh, somebody. One of my good friends recommended that I have Corey one year when he was at Maine, and I had him come down and speak. And we survey our coaches after it's all over. He gets some of the highest numbers of anybody. Um, so we bring him back every year because he does a phenomenal job. And he was at ODU um, with Big Bob, and oh, he was okay. And he came he came into my school. Uh, this year, and he started mentioning, you know, he's at Rutgers now, and he was talking about Coach Belichick coming. And I was like, well, tell me three things. And I, I think maybe the listeners would like to hear this. They probably already know it because you guys are from New England. But he, I said, well, what is it about him? And he said, first of all, number one, he doesn't play around. All right, two, he listens to everybody. And then three, he tells you like it is. So I was like, wow. And then when Tom McDaniels, was on he said Josh said that, that coach Belichick is probably the greatest listener that he's ever been around and Tom was upset because he didn't say him but you know do you know <laughs> coach Belichick is that is that pretty right on that is spot on with him uh, and I would add one other thing to it he is probably the most intelligent human being I've ever been around I saw him Troy speak at a clinic and he doesn't do clinics anymore <laughs> Bill hasn't done him for a number of years, but I saw him speak at a clinic at Bryant University in Rhode Island years ago, maybe 20 something years ago, and speak off the cuff for two hours with not looking at one note, just yeah. talk football. And his his recall and his memory is incredible. I mean, he can go back to any situation, any particular play. Um, he is really a you know, savant when it comes to the game. And, you know, everybody should read that book about Bill Belichick, The Education of a Coach, because mm -hmm. that really explains his roots and his dad at the Naval Academy and how he learned the game. I mean, Bill Belichick and, and Ernie Adams were. I was about the, to ask you about Ernie Adams. Yeah, those guys were at Wesley and together in Connecticut. And they used to go out during during the spring and go visit everybody's spring ball. I mean, they were students at Wesleyan that just loved the game of football and go out and scout teams and 
But if you you need to read that book, the education. I have coach. it. I have, it's, I have it. I've read it when it Halber, Halberstein, Halberstein, Halberstein. Yep, David Halberstein. Yeah, I, I yep. read it when it came out, Coach. Yeah, I'm a he's Chelsea Coach. I'll, coach, I gave away Evershevsky's Wing T book and a signed copy of wow. Delaware a system of football. I gave both books away last weekend to a guy that drove an hour to, a, he was a wing T guy and I'm, wow. I, I used to be a wing T guy, but I told him I said, take them. I said, you enjoy them more. So yeah, coach, I'm a junkie. I tell you, Troy, it was funny. You know, I told you, told you that we have a legends lecture. The first one we ever had was Tubby Raymond. Yeah. And Tubby was in his eighties at the time. And some of his mm. former players kind of helped me get him up there and they drove him up from Delaware, and he was phenomenal. He was in his 80s and talked about the wing tee and all the basic plays, you know, the buck sweep and tackle yep. trap and belly and that stuff. And um, it was an honor to have him be at our clinic because he wasn't a New England guy, but he came up because there were so many of his disciples that were in our area that wanted to see Tubby. So, Amen. unfortunately, he's passed now, but what a legend he was, huh? He and Ted Dave Kemp Nelson. Wilson. I think I, Dave Nelson had, a, had yes. signed the book, too, that I gave away. Wow. Yeah. I, I, get, I told the guy, he was like, give me, let me give you some money. And I said, it'll be a great story to tell one day, dude, you drove an hour to get this book. All right. Tim Murphy. I can't even spell Harvard. I mean, coach, I, I was not, I'm not very sharp. He's so, been there a long time. Tim and I, like I said, we're teammates at Springfield and uh, he's been there. He's a winningest coach in Harvard history. Yeah. He's a good man. And, Ben will do his second lecture there, and Ross will do his second lecture too. Uh, then we get into guys at night. Mike Sarasulo is now the current head coach at Springfield, and he they're a triple option team. That's that's all they've done for under the last. center. Yep, under center, and they've been running the triple option the under best center way to run it. Yep, they do a great job. They lead the nation so in rushing. Fast. Yep. So Mike is uh, coached for Mike DeLong, who we're honoring. So Mike's going to speak, and then he's going to introduce Coach DeLong in the uh, Legends Lecture. Then Donnie Brown's going to speak, and uh, Donnie is the head coach of UMass, but he's been everywhere. And, yes. and I, I don't he's know. He's a high school much. coach. That yeah, he, cool. yeah, he's a local guy from Massachusetts that uh, played at Norwich University in Vermont and um, still loves his New England roots, even when he was out at the University of Arizona, and he was the uh, – he was the defense coordinator at Michigan before he went to Arizona. He mm -hmm. is a New England guy and takes care of New England coaches, and people love Don Brown in this area. Yes, they do. Yep. So, and then Rich Bell. I, love him, I, and I don't even know him. I know Bob Shoup. You know. Oh, yeah. Bob Shoup. Actually, Donnie and Bob Shoup spoke together at the clinic a few years back. Um, Bob Shoup's a good man, real good man. So then we mentioned Rich Bonello, my teammate from Dallas, PA. He's going to speak. And – all we, we always have a strength and conditioning coach too, Troy. So yes, this year we're, it's kind of unique because we have Adam and Mary Kate fight who are husband and wife and they both work out of Springfield college and awesome. um, our title sponsor of our clinic, which is perform better. And they're uh, it's a Chris big Pointer, name. Yeah. A big, and, big, big name. Yeah. Perform better does a great job, especially in the area of strength and conditioning. And they, yeah. they help us bring in our strength and conditioning coaches. So we've never had Adam or Mary Kate fight with us, but we're really looking forward to having him this year. Um, Marquise Watson from Rutgers is going to speak. He's a great defensive line coach there. He'll do a live session. Got Chris Haddad from Bellingham high school, Massachusetts. You probably know if you're an internet guy, Chris is all over the internet and his specialty is wide receiver play and defensive back play. And I think that that's probably it for what, for Friday. Is that it, Troy? I think I lost you. Hey, this is Troy Taylor. Um, we had a little bit of technical difficulties, but we're back, and we're going to pick up where we were. I mean, Coach, have we had fun, or have we had fun so far? Yeah, this has been great, Troy. I've really enjoyed this. this yeah, well, I, I really appreciate you even coming on. I mean, you, you don't know me from Adam, and you don't know whether I'm a football guy or not, but I think after today, you know, the people that don't know me, 
they're going to say that guy, he's an idiot. But um, well, I did my homework on you. I did some research on you, and you've had a lot of success, Troy. So yeah, <laughs> you're, you're the real deal. And I have a I have a soft place in my heart for uh, for football coaches and. You know, we were talking about Bill Belichick before we ran into the technical difficulties. And one of the things you find about Bill Belichick is he's probably not the greatest with the media, as you could see. But when he talks to football people, he changes his whole persona because he yeah. respects football people. And I feel the same way about you. I tell you, um, when I started doing this, one of my former assistant coaches said, Troy, you, you shouldn't do this. You, you shouldn't do this podcast because you're going to talk too much. You know, people are really going to see you and you're, you're I guess when people watch this, they see how I think. And mm -hmm. in the media, I take that Bill, Belichick type philosophy. I answer the question and I stop. You know, everybody's got a great team. Everybody's well coached. And on this, you know, I, I have dialogue with people. So, you know, it might come back to bite me. But, hey, if, if we can help one coach, um, then it was worth it. I mean, I'm, I'm just like you. I love clinics. I mean, yeah. I was the young coach with the camera videoing guys, not even asking permission. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got some good ones too. I'm going to put them up. I got, uh, I got Bill Cower. Wow. Uh, with the NC state. This is the only clinic he's ever given for Chuck Amato. Jimbo Fisher was there as the offensive coordinator at LSU. I got, uh, I got some other guys that have never given clinics before. I got Sean Payton's when he went to Nebraska for coach Callahan. No talk. kidding. I've never done yeah. a clinic before that I know of. Um, so you you can see um, which who do we <clears throat> who did we? I was messing around with Coach about the duo play. All right, there, there's this there's this guy on uh, Twitter. He calls himself Coach Old School, and, and Coach McNally says he's got a mask on. But I was just messing with him about that. He got, <laughs> I knew he'd get fired up. Yeah. So Friday, six forty to seven forty. We, we got our. You want to talk? We we talked about these guys. How we did you talk about Marquise Watson? Or did yeah, we he's a, he's a guy who was originally from Bryant University here and went down to Rutgers. He's a great coach, and he he's coming up with Corey. They're coming up together from Rutgers, so he'll do a great job. And Savon, we mentioned earlier too. Mm -hmm. and, and then you can see Mike DeLong, our legend speaker from Springfield, and then Corey Heatherman's going to do his live session on linebacker play after that, and kind of finish up the night there with Chris Sarkowski is, uh, is one of the best offensive line coaches around. He's at Princeton and uh, he's, this will be the second year in a row that Chris has spoken at our clinic and he does a phenomenal job. Our coaches love him too. And then we have Garrett Gillick and Garrett is, uh, Garrett is the defense coordinator at university of New Hampshire. And they had an unbelievable season this year. We've had him speak before, but he'll do a great job. And then uh, we have uh, Alex Rotsko from, um, Marshside, Marshwood in Maine. Alex was a phenomenal high school coach in Longmeadow, Massachusetts, and then moved up to Maine when he retired. And he's won numerous state championships in Maine. He's one of the most legendary coaches in New England. Man. And Jim Fleming, the head coach at the University of Rhode Island, will speak next. Then we got a, a guy, John Bowen, from my old stomping grounds in upstate New York, from Schuylerville, New York, who's coming down to speak. Then Donnie Brown will do his live session as well. And then uh, the next morning, we got the guy, Dante Skarnakia, and uh, he'll speak to everyone at the clinic and do a phenomenal job. And then we're into Saturday, obviously, now. Patrick Murphy is the offensive coordinator at the University of Rhode Island and one of the best uh, RPO guys around. He's a phenomenal offensive coach. And then uh, at the same time, Keith Dudzinski, who's the defensive coordinator at UMass for Donnie Brown, will speak. And then Alex Rotsko will do his second session Saturday morning. Then we go on to uh, Adam and Mary Kate fight. As I told you, the strength and yeah. conditioning coaches from Springfield will do their second session as will John Bowen. And then Chris Sarkowski will do his live uh, offensive line play in the atrium. Then we're real thrilled to have Ryan Cardi back. He's the head coach of the university of Delaware. Uh, he went to Delaware, played at Delaware, but his, he had a long career as the offensive coordinator at the University of New Hampshire. And we had Ryan speak when he was in New Hampshire. Every year he would lead off on Fridays. And then he went uh, to Sam Houston State and uh, as the offensive coordinator, won a national championship there, and then got hired last year as the head coach at Delaware. And he's a great clinician. Uh, Garrett Gillick will do his second lecture. 
And then we have a, a young guy by the name of Ian Bain that's the head coach at Franklin High School in Massachusetts who's had tremendous success at Franklin, and he's a great clinician as well. You probably see a lot of him on the Internet. Uh, so we'll have him back for the second time. Tony Reno, the head coach at Yale University, Ivy League champions this year. We probably had Tony probably four years ago. Happy to have him back. Uh, John Marshall, who's the head coach at Randolph High School in Massachusetts, uh, has spoken at our clinic a few times. Then Keith Dudzinski will do his live session uh, in the atrium as well. Then we have Ryan Cardi doing his second session. And Jim Reed, as you know, he is a legend. Uh, He's a Jim Reed is one of the one of the most unique guys in the coaching field. He's at Mass Maritime right now as a defense coordinator because Jim retired he and lives on Cape Cod, so he's at Mass Maritime. I'll give you a funny story, Troy. Uh, years yeah. ago, Jim is, uh, I want to say in his early 70s, maybe 70, 71. He was doing a live lecture in the atrium a few years ago, and uh, so he's getting all fired up. He's got one of his former players holding a, a dummy or a hand shield, and Jim gets all animated and rips off his shirt and does the rest of his live lecture with no shirt on. And have you got video of this? Do, yeah, well, I have video of it. Yeah. Okay, well, I, I think it would go viral. We not, might need to. <laughs> well, the guy's in great shape, so he has nothing to be ashamed of. Oh, I know. Of. I won't be ripping my shirt off, off anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll get you that with his permission. How's that sound? <laughs> oh, man. I've been trying to get a hold of him. He's got three different Twitters. i finally seen his real one now because he's talking about your clinic when I was Googling it. Well, if you, like I said, Troy, if you need any of the names and contact information for the guys that speak at our clinic, I'd be yeah, happy just, to help you out with all Yeah, us. just hit me up. Hit, hit them up and tell them um, to hit me up. And then, I mean, yeah, I mean, they already got presentations going. It'd be great because I've need i gotten hooked up with the Texas guys and Alabama guys and Georgia. Nice. Um, but I need to get I need to get up in the Northeast. Um, be happy to help you out with it. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. So Chris Barrett, the head coach of Bryant University, is going to speak to John Marshall will do his second one. Stephen Barnett, who I mentioned earlier, will do his live session on wide receiver play. Um, then we have Ryan Madison, the offensive coordinator at Brown University, that's going to speak. And John Silawa is the uh, is the offensive coordinator, um, special teams coach at Bryant. And then Lou Marinelli from Connecticut. He's from New Canaan High School in Connecticut. You would love to talk to this guy, Troy. He's yes. the winningest coach in the in the history of Connecticut high school football. Yeah. And he's been doing it a long time, and he does it as good as if not better than anybody that I've ever seen. Well, I so got to talk to him. Yeah, he's a good man. He, yes, sir. He'd love to have him. He's got a great sense of humor, and he's a great coach and a great clinician. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing Lou this weekend. Yes, sir. And uh, then we got Paul McGonagall, who's the head coach at Endicott College, which is Division Three school here in New England. Um, P.J. Gibbs, I think you know him, don't you, Troy? Yes, sir. He, he came on last night, and um, he came on uh, the other morning. And P.J. is going to be doing the clinic uh, to raise money for autism. Uh, oh, so great. Going online on May 5th and 6th. And he's kind of hooked up with me, um, and I'm going to um, do like a private um, – clinic like a stream yard type it's like this is like zoom it's gonna be like yep. a private seminar for that clinic to raise money for autism I'm, I'm excited about it troy because pj and i have communicated for a lot of years you know he's in florida he's a new jersey guy originally mm -hmm. but we've tried to make arrangements to get him to the clinic but never been able to pull it off and we were able to get him here this year and as you know he's from golden gate high school in florida and um he's He's a phenomenal coach, and this will be the first time he's ever spoken at our clinic, so we're excited to have him coming. He's in. a Don Brown guy. Yeah, he is. He loves Donnie Brown. He does yep. Don Brown. Yep. Then Jimmy Reed will do his live session and hopefully keep his shirt on in the atrium. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we got Stefan Wheeler, who's the offensive line coach at the University of Rhode Island, who's going to talk about double teams. Matt Moran is a guy that was uh, worked as a special teams coach out at Stanford for David Shaw for a number of years. And now he's just been hired at Boston College, and he's kind of a kind of a guru in the in the special teams world, and did a lot of consulting last fall with mm -hmm. a lot of programs, including Holy Cross, which is one of the best special teams programs that I've seen in a long time. So we're happy to have Matt here. He's a native Rhode Island guy, played at Bishop Hendrickson. And what do we got next here beyond that? So we got Stefan, and then we got. Uh, Oh, Eli Gardner, who's the head coach at Stonehill College here in Massachusetts. Eli, uh, they just went to Division One, and he's done a phenomenal job of, of bringing them to that level and happy to have him back. Patrick Murphy will do his live session then on quarterback play using the Salve Regina quarterbacks. 
John will do his second lecture from Brian. And you might have, uh, you might know Jack Cooper. I don't know, Troy, uh, who's a defense coordinator at Rhode Island. Do you know Jack? No, sir. Where, where has he been? He, he was, uh, he was a coach out at Nebraska and he's originally a Connecticut kid and went to, ne went to Nebraska there. I think, uh, I forget what his capacity was there, but he came back as the defensive coordinator to university, university of Rhode Island. You definitely want to have Jack on. He loves to talk football all the okay. time. Yeah. So he's a good man to talk to. Yes, sir. And uh, then we got Kevin Gilmartin, who's the head coach of Salve Regina, right in the home city of Newport, where we host our clinic. And Kevin does a phenomenal job at, at Salve and had a great year this year. And then Bobby Johnson, who was, was at the uh, University of Albany, and now he's at the University of New England in Maine, and he's a great and up-and-coming offensive line coach, so he's going to do a live session on offensive line play as well. Is the so University of New England, is that a new name or is that a new school? Because I'm not familiar with them. Yeah, they're around. They people don't. They're a Division three school, but uh, yeah. they're up in Maine, so they probably don't get as much recognition. But uh, Bobby is a, a very good offensive line coach. We're looking forward to seeing him speak. Yes, sir. So um, was there anything that we left out or anything that you would like to say to the clinic uh, before we get off here? I'd like to talk to you a little bit um, after we end the broadcast before I got to start class. But is there anything uh, we got the information down there at the bottom? Well, I think the, the thing that makes us unique, Troy, as a clinic, and you've spoken at a lot of them, I'm sure, and you've attended them as I have, is we're a family-run clinic. And Amen. my wife does the finances. My daughter does a lot of the marketing. Um, my grandsons are there. My son-in-law, my daughters. It's, uh, it's a family-run clinic that we're not a, you know, we're not a big corporate clinic. We, make, we try to make people feel at home. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing that, that Jim McNally mentioned too is that we have a hospitality room at our clinic and we feed and drink and get people into our hospitality room. And that's available to our coaches from the time the clinic starts at, you know, 1230 on Friday until the end of it, that uh, we have a huge buffet dinner on Friday night for our entire staff and all of our clinicians. We pay for the hotel rooms for all our clinicians to stay over. You know, a lot of the you know, at times with some corporate clinics, they want to get you in and get you out. You speak and you get out of there. We don't believe that. We want people to come to Newport for two days. We want to wine and dine you. We want to give you a room, um, you know, which is right on the ocean. Our hotel is right on the ocean. It's gorgeous. And mm. uh, I think that we treat people differently because we're not corporate. And, you know, our profits aren't probably as high as some of those other clinics, but we don't care because we want to run it right. And we want to run a first class clinic. So, I think that's what makes us unique is that we know all the people. We know our vendors that come to exhibit. We know our coaches. You know, we, we've developed relationships over the last 40 something years with people that they keep coming back because I think they like our clinic and I think that they like Newport. And I think it's just a place that people really enjoy it. And, you know, during COVID, we we just missed that opportunity. It was awful, as you know, and mm -hmm get together and you know we got together the next year and it was like old home week the next the year we came back in 2021 and and it was just fun to be back and be around coaches again so um yeah i think that's that's what makes us special and i can't wait i can't wait to get over to newport and i go over today because we have to get organized to get all set up for the the whole setup but uh it's it's exhausting, but it's a labor of love, and it's something I do with my family that I truly enjoy. And I can't wait to see all the coaches that that are attending, but also the clinicians that we get to spend time with in Newport over the next two days. I mean, it's like a, it's like a family reunion, class reunion, keg party, fraternity party slash. I mean, it's just I, educational seminar. It's and that's what makes it special. Because it's all those things. Um, and you put your heart into it. And you probably work on it year round. People don't realize. Because I, I heard you have a waiting list. That you just can't say, hey. Um, you know, I saw one guy. He's got like a he's got like a, a sign up. Like for his clinic. Anybody can just sign up. Not anybody's just signing up for yours. No. And you, you know, it's funny. I, I will have, you know, for the number of people that speak at the clinic too, Troy. I'll have a waiting list of probably 30 coaches that want to speak next year. Mm. And, you know, it's people feel like it's an honor to come to Newport and speak oh, and they yeah. know that they get treated well as, as well. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a, uh, it's a unique format. It's a unique setup. We just try to keep getting better. And you're right. You've run a clinic before. 
this never leaves you. You work on it year round. You, um, I like to, you know, Troy, and I'm sure you do this as well. I cultivate the relationships with our coaches all year. And, you know, I went to Las Vegas and saw Josh McDaniels play this year. And, you know, I got out to uh, Green Bay because of Mike Sherman this year. And I'm always texting with Jeff Munkin and Army and Bobby Chesney and Donnie Brown and Jimmy Reed and all those people, because those great relationships have got to be cultivated, not just in March when you host a clinic, but year round because it's a friendship and it's a mutual respect. So when we ask people to speak, it's because we maintain our relationships year round. Yes, sir. Is there anything you'd like to say to the young coaches out there? There are so many guys that just want to move up the ladder or think they need to be the head coach. I mean, going to clinics is something that all of them should do. Is there anything that's on your heart to talk to young coaches? Well, you know, I think, Troy, I don't know if it's the case in your area in Virginia, but sometimes young coaches go to the head of the class too quickly. And I think that you have to learn from the people that you work with and, and you want to spend time with some quality head coaches to learn the game before you take that next leap. Because unfortunately, I've seen a lot of young coaches that have become head coaches too quickly and will flame out because they don't have that foundation of experience underneath them. Um, but I will say this is that, you know, coaching hasn't changed. I mean, football is still about blocking and tackling. That'll never, ever change. But how you treat kids is the most important thing. And for people that want to possibly treat players like their head coach might have treated them 30 and 40 years ago, that doesn't exist anymore. You know, kids need to know that you're going to be fair, that you're going to be tough, but you care about them. And when you can, when you got to get down on them a little bit to get them to play at a higher level, they need to know that you care about them. And if you don't exercise that ability to know that you care, um, I think it's really important. You know, I remember, you know, I played a long time ago, but I remember one of my assistant coaches in high school was the first coach that ever told me that he loved me. I mean, mm -hmm. you never talk like that to players, you know, nowadays that you tell a kid that you love him and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it doesn't make us less of men if we can tell some kid that, that we love him and we care about him. So um, I just think that young coaches just got to sponge up as much as you can I, you know, I run a clinic and I know it's important to do clinics, but they got, you got to get on the road and you got to go visit colleges too. You've got to go see other people and also don't ever downplay the ability to learn more from other high school coaches, from other coaches around your region. Mm -hmm. You know, not all the answers are all at the college level. They could be right in your backyard. It's at neighboring high school. So, you know, just soak it up, spend as much time as you can on it. Um, you know, we recommended our clinic that if you bring a staff of, you know, four or five coaches that come together, don't go to the same lecture, spread spread out and go to five or six different lectures and bring all that knowledge together. You know, and and I don't know if you do it, Troy, with your staff, but when I used to take my my guys to a clinic, we would go to all the lectures, but we would pull it. We'd grab a some ballroom or some room in the hotel and we'd have a staff meeting all the time while we were there oh, yeah. because we could talk about personnel and what our plans were for the year. And, you know, it. You're a football junkie like I am. Oh, yeah. You just got to love it and keep talking about it. Yeah, I, I love being in a school like L.C. Bird because everybody knows that we're going to run ISO and power over <laughs> and over. Josh McDaniels, I had your dad on. If you're watching this, all right, I, I want to have you on because, you know, they say he knows defense just as good as he knows offense. And that was one of the things his dad told me was when he was with New England as a young coach after he left. Nick Saban in Michigan State, he made him a defensive analyst or whatever it was, you know. So, I mean, yeah. If you're an offensive coach, go hear defensive coaches, right? You have to. You have or, to. Or if you're defense, hear offense. Yeah. And that's the other thing about young coaches too, Troy. Coach a bunch of different positions and learn the game. Just don't don't coach the position that you played like when you Chip played. Kelly. Yeah. At New Hampshire for so long. Yep. I mean, Great he, coach. Yeah. He, he coached it all. Yep. So, uh, Keith, I appreciate you. I know y'all are going to have a great time. And if I could get up there, I would, man. Uh, um, but I would like to stay on and talk to you for a little bit after it ends. But is there anything else you'd like to say, Keith? I'm good. Thanks for having me on. This was great. Uh, this is my first podcast. I've never done one of these before. So it was wow. just fun. Yeah. So, so I can't believe all these football podcast guys 
never thought, well, maybe I should talk to the guy that's got the biggest clinic in the country. <laughs> wow. Well, I, it's an honor, but thank yeah. you very much. Thank you.